Christmas between Christianity and Islam. Muslims do not bother themselves a lot with Christmas itself as a baseless observance. They rather object to many Christian beliefs based on this occasion. By Abdul Rahman Mojahid. In each December, specifically the 25th of December, most Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, better known as Christmas. Though there is no evidence from the Bible itself that Jesus was born on the 25th of December. The specific day on which he was born per se is not subject to much controversy between Christians and Muslims. Having no authentic proof that Jesus was born on this very day, Muslims do not bother themselves a lot with Christmas itself as a baseless observance. They rather object to many Christian beliefs based on this occasion. In this article, I will highlight the main differences between Christians and Muslims regarding the birth of Jesus. For example, though we notice amazing similarity between the biblical verses and their Quranic counterparts dealing with the miraculous birth of Jesus. The conclusions drawn from each scripture are worlds apart. In the New Testament, we read the following biblical verses. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Luke 1 verses 30 to 35 In the Quran, we read the following verses. And, mention, when the angel said, O Mary, indeed God has chosen you and purified you and chosen you above the women of the worlds. O Mary, be devoutly obedient to your Lord and prostrate and bow with those who bow, in prayer. And mention, when the angel said, O Mary, indeed God gives you good tidings of a word from him. Whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of Mary, distinguished in this world and the hereafter and among those brought near, to God? He will speak to the people in the cradle and in maturity and will be of the righteous. She said, My Lord, how will I have a child when no man has touched me? The angel said, Such is God. He creates what he wills. When he decrees a matter, he only says to it, Be, and it is. And he will teach him writing and wisdom and the Torah and the Gospel. And, make him, a messenger to the children of Israel, who will say, Indeed I have come to you with a sign from your Lord and that I designed for you from clay, that which is, like the form of a bird. Then I breathe into it and it becomes a bird by permission of God. And I cure the blind and the leper, and I give life to the dead by permission of God. And I inform you of what you eat and what you store in your houses. Indeed and that is a sign for you, if you are believers. And, I have come, confirming what was before me of the Torah and to make lawful for you some of what was forbidden to you. And I have come to you with a sign from your Lord, so fear God and obey me. Indeed, God is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him. That is the straight path. Indeed, the example of Jesus to God is like that of Adam. He created him from dust, then he said to him, Be, and he was. The truth is from your Lord, so do not be among the doubters. Then whoever argues with you about it after, this, knowledge has come to you, say, Come, let us call our sons and your sons, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves. Then supplicate earnestly, together, and invoke the curse of God upon the liars, among us. Indeed, this is the true narration. And there is no deity except God. And indeed, God is the exalted in might, the wise. Say, O people of the scripture. Come to a word that is equitable between us and you that we will not worship except God and not associate anything with him and not take one another as lords instead of God. But if they turn away, then say, bear witness that we are Muslims, submitting to him. It is not for a human, prophet, that God should give him the scripture and authority and prophethood and then he would say to the people, be servants to me rather than God, but, instead, he would say, Be pious scholars of the Lord because of what you have taught of the Scripture and because of what you have studied. Nor could he order you to take the angels and prophets as lords. Would he order you to disbelieve after you had been Muslims? Say, 
we have believed in God and in what was revealed to us and what was revealed to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the descendants, and in what was given to Moses and Jesus and to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them, and we are Muslims, submitting to him. A.L. Imran 3.42-84 Remember, O Messenger, when the angel said to Mary, Peace be upon her, Allah has chosen you because of the praiseworthy qualities you have. He has purified you from all defects, and chosen you over all the other women of your time. O Mary, stand for long periods in prayer, prostrate to your Lord and bow down with his righteous servants who bow down to him. The story of Zachariah and Mary is one of the reports of, the Gabe, which I reveal to you, O Messenger. You were not there with those scholars and worshippers when they argued about who was most entitled to raise Mary. They eventually decided to draw lots by throwing their pens, and the pen of Zechariah, peace be upon him, won. Remember, O messenger, when the angel said, O Mary, Allah gives you good news of a child who will be created without a father. Merely by a word from Allah, such as be, and he will become a child by Allah's will. The name of this child will be the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. He will have a high rank IR world and the afterlife and he will have those who are made close to Allah. This child will miraculously speak to people when he is a small baby, as well as when he grows up and becomes a man. He will tell them what is best for them in their religious and worldly affairs. He will also be one of those who are righteous in their words and actions. Mary was surprised that she was to have a child without a husband and said in astonishment, How can I have a child when no man has come near me in a lawful or unlawful way? The angel said to her, Just as Allah will create a child for you without a father, he creates whatever he wishes even though it may be out of the ordinary. When Allah wishes for something, he says be and it is. Nothing can stop him doing as he wills. Allah will teach him to say and do things correctly, and he will teach him the Torah that he had revealed to Moses, peace be upon him, and the gospel which he will reveal to him. Allah will make him a messenger to the Israelites, instructing him to say to them, I am Allah's messenger to you. I have brought to you a sign indicating my prophethood, I will make the shape of a bird using clay, then I will breathe into it and it will become a living bird by Allah's permission. I will cure the one who was born blind, so that he will be able to see, and the leper who will recover from his illness, and I will bring the dead to life. I will do all of this with Allah's permission. I will tell you about what you consume and what you hide in your homes. In all of these extraordinary things that I mentioned to you, which human beings cannot do, is a clear sign that I am Allah's messenger to you, if you wish to have faith and to accept the proof. I have come to you to confirm the revelation of the Torah that was before me, and to make lawful some of that which was unlawful in the past, making things easy for you. I have brought to you a clear proof of the truthfulness of what I say, so be mindful of Allah by fulfilling his instructions and avoiding his prohibitions, and follow that which I call you to. Allah is my Lord and your Lord, and He is the only one that deserves to be followed and feared. So, worship Him alone. This worship of Allah and being mindful of Him that I instruct you to do is the straight path which has no crookedness. When Jesus realized that they were going to continue in their disbelief, He addressed the Israelites, saying, Who will help me in calling towards Allah? His chosen followers said, we are the ones who will help Allah's religion. We have faith in Allah and we follow you. Be a witness, O Jesus, that we submit to Allah by accepting his oneness and following him. The disciples also said, Our Lord, we have believed in the gospel that you revealed and we have followed the messenger, Jesus, peace be upon him. So make us of those who are witnesses to the truth and who have faith in you and your messengers. The disbelievers from the Israelites plotted to kill Jesus, peace be upon him, so Allah planned to leave them in their misguidance. And he made another person resemble Jesus, peace be upon him, on the occasion when they actually tried to murder him. Allah is the best plotter, because there can be nothing more severe than his plot against his enemies. Allah also planned against them by saying to Jesus, O oh Jesus, I will take you away alive, raise your body and soul to me, rid you of the filth of those who disbelieve you and distance you from them. I will make those who follow you part of the true religion, which includes acceptance of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And they will have greater proof and might over those who disbelieve you until the day of resurrection. Then to me alone will be your return on the day of resurrection and I will pass true judgment between you regarding your differences. 
As for those who disbelieve you and the truth you brought to them, I will punish them severely in the world by making them suffer being killed, imprisoned, and disgraced. And in the afterlife, I will punish them in the fire of hell. They will have no one to help them against the punishment. As for those who had faith in you and the truth that you brought to them and did good actions, such as prayer, charity, fasting, keeping family relations, etc., then Allah will give them the reward of their actions in full without any reduction. This refers to the followers of the Messiah before the coming of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, whose coming was confirmed by the Messiah himself. Allah does not love those who do wrong and the greatest wrong is to ascribe partners to Allah and to disbelieve his messengers. This account of Jesus which is recited to you is a clear sign indicating the truth of what was revealed to you. It is a perfect message for those who are mindful of Allah, as it contains nothing false. With Allah, the example of the creation of Jesus, peace be upon him, is like the creation of Adam, who was born from dust without a father or mother. Allah simply said to him, Become a man. And he became as Allah willed. How do you then assume that Jesus is a God on the basis that he has no father when you accept that Adam is human despite his having no father or mother? The undoubtable truth about Jesus is that which was revealed to you by your Lord, so do not be one of those who doubt and are unsure. Instead, be firm on the truth that you have. If any one of the Christians disputes with you, O Messenger, regarding the matter of Jesus, and claims that he was not Allah's servant after the correct knowledge has come to you, then say to them, Come, let us call our sons and your sons, our women and your women, ourselves and yourselves, and let us gather together and then pray to Allah to send down his curse on those of us who are lying. That which has been mentioned to you about Jesus, peace be upon him, is the true tale that contains no lie or doubt. There is no one worthy of worship besides Allah alone. Allah is mighty in his authority and wise in his planning and instruction. If they turn away from what you have brought and do not follow you, then it is because they are corrupt. Allah knows those who cause corruption in the earth and he will recompense them for that. Say, O Messenger, O Jews and Christians, people of the Scripture, come let us unite on a fair word in which we are all equal. That we worship Allah alone and we do not worship anyone besides him, no matter what his rank and no matter how high is his status. And that we do not take one another as lords to be worshipped and followed besides Allah. If they turn away from the truth and fairness that you call them towards, then, O believers, say to them, Bear witness that we have surrendered to Allah and are obedient to him. O people of the scripture, why do you dispute about the belief of Abraham? The Jews claimed that he was a Jew and the Christians claimed he was a Christian. You know very well that Judaism and Christianity appeared a long time after him. Can you not see the falseness of your statement and the error of your claim? You, people of the scripture, argued without knowledge with the prophet, peace be upon him, about your religion and about what was revealed to you. Why, then, do you dispute about Abraham and his religion, which you do not know, as it is not in your book and your prophets did not discuss it? Allah knows the reality of things and you do not know. Abraham was not a Jew or Christian in belief, but he was opposed to all false religions and obedient to Allah alone. He was also not one of those who ascribe partners to Allah, contrary to the idolaters of the Arabs, who claim to follow his belief. The people who are most entitled to claim a link to Abraham are those who followed him in his time as well as this Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and those who have faith in him from this nation. Allah helps and protects the believers. The scholars of the Jews and the Christians desire to mislead you, O believers, away from the truth that Allah has guided you to. Yet they only mislead themselves because their attempt to mislead the believers only increases their misguidance, and they do not know the consequence of their actions. O people of the Scripture, Jews and Christians! Why do you disbelieve Allah's words which were sent down to you and the clear indication they contain of the prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him? Whilst you are witness to the fact that it is the truth contained in your books? O people of the scripture, why do you mix the truth contained in your books with falsehood from yourselves? Why do you hide the truth and guidance contained in your book, such as the truthfulness of the prophethood of Muhammad, peace be upon him, when you know what is true and what is false? A group of Jewish scholars said, on the outside, accept the Quran which was revealed to the believers at the beginning of the day and then reject it at the end of the day, so that, after seeing this, they begin to have doubts about their religion and turn back from it saying, these people know better about Allah's book and they have turned back. They also said, do not believe or accept anyone unless he is a Jew and follows your religion. 
Say, O Messenger, guidance to the truth is the guidance of Allah. Not the disbelief and stubbornness that you display, fearing that anyone else could be given a bounty similar to what you were given. Or that they would argue with you before your Lord if you acknowledged what was revealed to them. Say, O Messenger, bounty is in Allah's hand and he gives it to whomever of his servants he wills, his bounty is not restricted to any one nation. Allah is embracing and he knows who is deserving. He selects whomever of his creation he wishes to receive his mercy and blesses them with guidance, prophethood and numerous favors. Allah's bounty is great and has no limit. There are some people of the scripture who, if you hand over a large amount of wealth, will honor the trust. On the other hand, there are some of them who, if you trust them with a small amount, will not return the trust unless you persistently demand it from them. That is because they wrongly claim that there is no sin on them for any crime they commit against the Arabs or if they consume the wealth of the Arabs, since Allah has permitted that for them. They say such lies knowing that it is a false attribution to Allah. It is not as they claimed, in fact, there is a sin on them. However, if anyone fulfills his promise to Allah to have faith in him and his messenger, as well as his promise to people to honor their trusts, and is mindful of Allah by fulfilling his instructions and avoiding his prohibitions, then Allah loves those who are mindful of him and will give them the best reward. Those who take a small amount of this world in exchange of Allah's advice to them to follow his revelation and his messengers, and in exchange of the oaths they took to fulfill Allah's pledge, will have no share in the reward of the afterlife. Allah will not speak kindly to them and will not look at them mercifully on the day of resurrection. They will receive a painful punishment. There is a group of Jews who twist their tongues when reciting the Torah that was revealed by Allah, so that you think that they are reciting from the Torah, whereas it is not from the Torah. Instead, it is their lies and fabrications against Allah. They say, what we recite has been revealed by Allah, whereas it was not revealed by Allah. They tell lies about Allah when they know they are lying against Allah and his messengers. It is not right for a man whom Allah gives a book revealed by him, together with knowledge and understanding and selects him as a prophet, to say then to people. Become servants of me instead of Allah. Rather, he should say to them, Be righteous scholars acting on what you know, because of your teaching the revealed book to people and because of your studying it by memorizing and understanding it. It is also not right for such a man to instruct you to take the angels and the prophets as lords to be worshipped besides Allah. Is it possible that he would instruct you to disbelieve after you have become devoted and have surrendered to him? Remember, O Messenger, when Allah took an affirmed promise from the prophets, saying to them, If I give you a revealed book, teach you wisdom and make you reach a high rank and status, and then my Messenger comes to you confirming the book and wisdom that you have, then you must accept what he brings and help him as his followers. Do you, O prophets, accept this and give me a firm commitment for that? They replied, We accept that. Allah said, Bear witness against yourselves and your communities, and I will also be a witness against you and them. Whoever turns away after this promise witnessed by Allah and his messengers, they are the ones who leave the religion of Allah and his obedience. Do these people, who leave the religion of Allah and his obedience, Look for something other than the religion Allah has chosen for his worship when every creation in the heavens and earth surrenders to him, whether willingly like the believers, or unwillingly. Like the disbelievers? Then all creation will return to him on the day of resurrection to give an account for their actions. Say, O Messenger, that you have faith in Allah, doing as he instructs you, and that you have faith in the revelation that was given to you, and to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, and Jacob and in what was revealed to the prophets among Jacob's descendants, and in the scriptures and miracles that were given to Moses, Jesus, and all the prophets by their Lord. Also, say that you make no distinction between them, believing in all of them, and that you are bound to Allah alone, surrendering in devotion to Him. Quran 3,59-62 The verses of the Quran corroborate most of the content of the verses of the Bible to the exclusion of the following two parts, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and so, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. The above two parts are subject to strong objections on the part of Muslims who offer convincing evidence and present reasonable arguments. For example, the status of Mary is of paramount importance. It is ironic that the Bible is silent on this very significant point. Is Mary the wife or concubine of God?
If she is the mother of God or the son of God, Jesus, why is she not a goddess? How can a human being give birth to a god to be worshipped by fellow human beings, including herself? Why is she not worshipped at least as the mother of the Son of God? Can a sexual relationship between God and a human being be so free and unregulated like this? The Abrahamic religions teach that intercourse cannot take place outside marriage, otherwise it will be considered an act of fornication or adultery. Marriage is a decent framework of intercourse. Was God so indecent that he impregnated a woman outside marriage, or did he marry her? How can God marry or have intercourse with one of his servants? The process through which Mary was caused to give birth to Jesus is devoid of direct contact between Mary and God. Both the Bible and the Quran tell us that Mary was impregnated extraordinarily, without sexual intervention either on the part of God or anybody else. How come Jesus is attributed to God as a son? The Bible makes no mention of any carnal intercourse. It just says that the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. According to the very wording of the Bible, Jesus was created by the power of God like all of us. About the mechanism of the birth of Jesus, more than once, the Quran says that Jesus was created as an embryo by a blow in Mary's womb. In the Quran, we read the following verses. And, mention, the one who guarded her chastity, so we blew into her, garment, through our angel, Gabriel, and we made her and her son a sign for the worlds. Alan Baya 21 hours 91 minutes O Messenger! Also mention the story of Mary peace be upon her, who protected herself from fornication. Allah then sent Gabriel, peace be upon him, to her, and he blew into her. Consequently, she became pregnant with Jesus, peace be upon him. They were both signs for the people of the power of Allah, and proofs that nothing is beyond Allah's capability such that he created Jesus without a father. Alan Baya 21 hours 91 minutes and, the example of, Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her chastity, so we blew into, her garment, through our angel. And she believed in the words of her Lord and his scriptures, and was of the devoutly obedient. Ad Tarm 66 12 And Allah also mentions an example for those who have faith in him and his messengers, in the condition of Mary the daughter of Imran who safeguarded her private parts from fornication. So Allah commanded Gabriel to blow into her due to which she fell pregnant through the power of Allah with Jesus the son of Mary, without a father. She also believed in the religions of Allah and the books revealed to his messengers, and she was obedient to Allah by fulfilling his commands and refraining from the things he did not allow. Ad Tarm 66 12 It is noteworthy that, by the same blow as Jesus, all mankind was created in the first place. In the Quran, we read the following verses. And, mention, O Muhammad, when your Lord said to the angels, I will create a human being out of clay from an altered black mud. And when I have proportioned him and breathed into him a my, created, soul, then fall down to him in prostration. al hijra 15, 28-29 O Messenger, remember when Allah said to the angels and Iblis, who was with them, I will create a being from dry clay that rings when it is hit, it is black and of an altered scent. If I fashion his image and perfect his creation, then prostrate to him in obedience to my command and to greet him. al hijra 15, 28-29 And he began the creation of man from clay. Then he made his posterity out of the extract of a liquid disdained. Then he proportioned him and breathed into him from his, created, soul and made for you hearing and vision and hearts, little are you grateful. As such to 32, 7-9 he is the being who perfected everything he created, and created the human from clay, without there having been a previous example of him. He then created the human's children after it from a delicate fluid, semen. Then he completed the creation of the human in his complete form his soul through the angel appointed with blowing the soul, and made for you, O people, ears so that you could hear with them. Eyes so that you could see, and hearts so that you could understand. Little are you grateful for these bounties of Allah which he bestows upon you. As such to 32 7 9. While Jesus had a miraculous birth, being born by a female without a male, Eve had an equally miraculous birth, being created from a male only without a female. And Adam had a more miraculous creation, being fashioned without a male as a father or a female as a mother. In this respect, the Quran says, 
Indeed, the example of Jesus to God is like the example of Adam. He created him from dust, soil, then he said to him, Be, and he was. Alan Ron 359 With Allah, the example of the creation of Jesus, peace be upon him, is like the creation of Adam, who was born from dust without a father or mother. Allah simply said to him, Become a man. And he became as Allah willed. How do you then assume that Jesus is a God on the basis that he has no father when you accept that Adam is human despite his having no father or mother? Alan Ron 359 The Bible itself refers to someone other than God as the father of Jesus. In the Bible, we read, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. That is to say it is apparently that Jesus cannot have both God and David as fathers. It is crystal clear that this is a metaphorical, figurative usage. Neither God nor David can really be the father of Jesus. Similarly, more than once, the Bible refers to several people other than Jesus as sons of God. In the Bible, we read, And thou, Moses, shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Exodus 4 verse 22 there are many similar instances like the following verses, 2 Samuel 7 verses 13 to 14, 1 Chronicles 22 verse 10, Deuteronomy 14 verse 1, Romans 8 verse 19, and Psalm 2 verse 7. References 1. The Glorious Quran, Sahih International Translation. 2. The Holy Bible, Visit.